Hey there, YouTube, I've got a big question for you. Do I need to secure my phone? Is there any importance to that at all? Do I need to like go and get some third party apps that exist in the app store to protect my phone? In this video, we are going to cover that. We're gonna look at some of the top apps that are out there in this video and some others coming up. But specifically today, we're gonna to be reviewing the Avast security platform. Does Avast do what it said? Is it worth the money? Do I need this on my phone? And what are my thoughts about it? We are gonna cover all of that and more coming right up. So cybersecurity on the phone, I mean, is that important at all? Well, let's answer that today in this video, and we're gonna be covering a number of technologies in this video series all around cybersecurity on our phones. We're gonna to cover today a review of a vast cybersecurity and talk about why that matters for you and for me and if we really even need it at all. Now, if you have never met me before and we have never met together, my name is Wes Spencer. I am a technologist, I'm a cybersecurity nerd, I have built cybersecurity companies from very small venture capitalist funded startups all the way to advising Fortune 500s. Cybersecurity is in my DNA and it's something I love. Now, to those who are my loyal and faithful followers, we are not abandoning the other fun things we talk about in this channel, things like cryptocurrencies and other innovative technologies. But in this series, we're going to start talking a lot more about phone security and if I need any of those things that exist on my phone. And so, as I mentioned today, we're gonna to take a look at Avast. We're gonna take a look at what they're doing and if I need it on my phone and what it looks like and overall my thoughts on why I think it's a, a pretty cool platform and if I recommend using it. So, first of all, if you're curious to see some of the things that are out there on your iPhone, just type in security at the very top in uh, your app store and you'll be taken to a list of different applications that exist. So you can see McAfee is here, Lookout, Norton, Avast, a lot of the key players. And then you start to see some newer ones that you may or may not have heard of, and then even getting into some privacy and some VPN apps. So definitely pretty cool to see some of these things on here. I'm not gonna review every single one, but I do wanna start with Avast because they're, they're a pretty well-known platform. And so when you tap into these guys, you're gonna see some things that are pretty good from a high level. Look at this, they've got 4.7 average rating out of 27,000 reviews. I mean, that's that's pretty good. There's a reason why I'm starting with theirs first. Not just the name recognition in the security industry, especially the consumer industry, but also the fact that they've got so many reviews. Now, <laughs> the thing I keep laughing about, you see their age categorization of four plus. I mean, sure, there's nothing like illicit in this app itself that would cause a rating for anything higher, but keep in mind, it has a VPN in it, not to spoil things for you, but uh, that VPN would allow you to bypass a lot of security controls and thereby find some illicit things. So I do find that four plus kind of interesting. Notice they're charting also at 155 in the app store. That is really good. There's a lot of other apps that would kill to have that high of a rating. So why, why is it that high? What do we know about it and why do we care? So Avast is saying 400 plus million users using Avast. Now, let me say something that includes a lot of different things. That includes the Avast security platform on the desktop, on not just mobile devices, Android, as well, but also a few years ago, they bought a company called AVG, which was ah, definitely at the time the number one free antivirus provider. I think they paid over a billion dollars for that acquisition. Keep in mind, free does not mean free. There was certainly value in AVG itself and what they do. So that one was a, a pretty interesting one. And so what's that done? Well, Avast has a huge market share now. I mean, they are really in the industry like a lot of others would love to be. Now, who is Avast? They are a cybersecurity company being run out of the Czech Republic, out of the beautiful, and I mean beautiful city of Prague. Take a look at Prague here. I am telling you, picture after picture, you want to be in Prague. And believe it or not, there's a lot of tech being run out of Prague. It's a wonderful place. So Avast has really grown as a security company. Now, let me say this, they're not really in the enterprise. If you go ask a lot of like enterprise security people, what do you think about Avast? They might kind of sneer at them. You know, they're not a crowd strike. They're not a Cisco. They're not trying to play in that market. They're definitely a B2C going after the consumer market. So that's why I wanted to start with them first on the phone, because I think they make a lot of sense. And by the way, they're making about 800 plus million dollars a year in revenue. So nothing to shake a stick at. They're doing really, really good themselves in terms of revenue. So let's take a look at the app. I've gone, I've gone ahead and installed it. I'm going to go ahead and 
and open it right here. And you can see it does some things right away from the very get go that I think are interesting. You can always force it to do a new scan. And in a minute, I'm gonna go and check uh, out a wireless network at a coffee shop. And we're gonna see, hey, is this any good? What do we, what do we get when we're in like a foreign area with a network we've never connected before? But you can see some things that happen right from the get-go. It does some Wi-Fi protection, so it is going to make sure that your Wi-Fi meets some standards like WPA2, uh, and it's gonna warn you if you have some issues around all of that. And that can be helpful. There certainly are wireless-based attacks that can take advantage of wireless networks that have been improperly configured or maybe properly configured, but they're being overridden, like a Wi-Fi pineapple. I'll show you a picture in one of those in just a minute, what they do to take over wireless networks and rebroadcast themselves and get people to connect through them unknowingly. So that's kind of an, a nice piece to this. Also identity protection, I've got a lot to say about that. So we're gonna tackle that in just a minute and then a photo vault. So pretty interesting stuff. Now you may be wondering, is all of this for free? Yes, kind of, sort of, like most apps, it, a lot of it is free, and then there's some paywalled things that you're gonna have to pay to get into, and so I'm gonna show you that. If you hit the upgrade button right here, there's some new things that you can get, um, not just the unlimited photo vault by default, they, they kind of pare that down to much less access if you're not paying for it, but also unlimited identity protection for what that may or may not be worth, we'll talk about that, and then Wi-Fi protection via a VPN. There's always lots of discussion around VPNs, and by the way, those of you that are watching, if you're curious and wanna know more about my thoughts of VPN, what's a good VPN, what's a bad VPN, uh, do I actually need one? Let me know in the comments below if you have interest in me covering and reviewing VPN services. I would be happy to give you my thoughts from a security practitioner of what's, uh, what's out there and what you might need. Okay, so we're gonna close out all of that and we're gonna take a couple looks at some things that exist here. So the first thing, notice that they actually talk about right from the get-go, one of the things they're saying is, hey, you know, this may not be super secure. It's in the yellow category for my wireless and of course, that's because they want me to turn on a VPN because that's where the revenue stream comes from. So if I say turn on VPN, notice they want five bucks a month. And really, this is the, the crux of the matter is this. Is the Avast app, out of everything else they're providing, a lot of it is free, is it worth five bucks a month? Well, I think it depends on, on, on the answer to that. So a couple of things you should know when it comes to the VPN itself, if we take a look at this, we can go down at the bottom and see not just the subscription and cancellation terms, which are good, but right here is the privacy policy. There are always some very good things you need to check out when it comes to a privacy policy. Now, what I'm not going to do is a bunch of legal nerdology on you and go through every piece of this term. Certainly not gonna do that, but there's a couple of things that we wanna really cover from a high level on the VPN policy itself. So when I click on this, um, there's a bunch of information about what kinds of data they collect. I would say by default, at least what their policy says they're collecting, they're doing the right things. They're not collecting everything that you're doing, but they do collect some of the things, some version information that you're using. They don't collect DNS data. So like where you go to from a domain name perspective, which is good. They actually show you, it's kind of hard to read on mobile, but the different things that they do collect. So the emails, usernames, license keys, a bunch of these things, um, some of the service data that they say they collect. So again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I do recommend if you're going to use Avast, take a look and really any VPN service, take a look at the things that they say they collect and also understand you're, you're tunneling all of your internet traffic through them. Why does that matter? Well, it matters because if you're getting all of your traffic through them and they can see everything, it all depends on what they collect and what they say they collect and maybe what they collect that they don't say they collect. And I'm not saying Avast is doing anything underhanded. I'm just saying you need to, if you're using a VPN for privacy, you need to really choose wisely which one that you, you use. So one of the things I think is is interesting is as we scroll down, they do some sharing with third parties. And so you need to be recognizing that, the fact that some of their data is shared out. That's typically a bad thing in the world of VPN. For those that are very privacy conscious and privacy concerned, you need to be very concerned about that. And then I'm gonna scroll way, way, way down. And there's one other thing that I think we need to get to when it comes to their controls. And if I can find this here, ah, yes, here it is. So disclosure of your information. What this means is, when and why and where and how might we disclose the information that we do collect 
from you. And this is something you need to know. So first, they say we disclose information to the broader group at Avast, and that makes sense, right? This is an Avast platform. There are different divisions of the Avast group, and so I would expect that. Um, but also notice that when you get to legal requirements, look at this, in the event that we are served with a valid subpoena, warrant, or other legal documents. So look at this, in the event that we are served with valid subpoenas, warrants, or other legal documents, we may, by applicable law that compels us to comply, share and disclose that information. So you need to know that. That is very important because there are ramifications to you and for you with your VPN and what you're using. So if you're doing something that you don't want anyone else to know about, there is a chance via subpoena, via just normal information sharing or sharing to third parties that some of that could be spread and leaked. My point is VPN is not always as secure as you might think that it is. So. Do I, what do I think about their VPN? I think it just depends on what you're using the VPN service for. If it's just normal everyday usage, I think you're fine. But if you're very security conscious, you might want to take a second look at Avast itself from the VPN perspective. Okay, let's take a look at identity protection. I'm gonna do this live with you. So I can type in one of the email addresses that I use. And then what I am going to do is let it check me out and say, hey, do I have leaked passwords? And by the way, shock factor, yes, almost everyone does. I know I have a number on this email address. Here's the way leaked passwords work. You can't stop a lot of this. This is one of these things where as you use your email as a username in the course of just living your life, some of the platforms you use are going to have your email address leaked through some kind of database hack or some other breach. And those get put onto public password lists and what we call dump lists. You can't stop that. That's just going to happen. And so to mitigate that you need to use unique passwords for every single site obviously long complex passwords but it is good to know the sites where you do have a leaked password that has been compromised a legitimate company is going to let you know when that happens but you will find when you check this against other lists you might be like I don't remember using that site ever before uh, maybe they never notified you or you missed it definitely a good opportunity to go in there and change that password. And you should never reuse the same password for any two sites. That's a bad idea because of reasons just like this. So we're gonna take a look at this. I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna look and see, oh my goodness, look at all the different sites where I have had a leaked password. Now for me, fortunately, every single one of these, I am well aware that I've had a leaked password for. None of these concern me. I've changed them for all of these. But what I can do is I can actually tap on one and I can see the information around it. So here's Canva's. If you don't know, Canva had a database breach. So you're seeing the information around all of this. And then I can click on this change password. And this is kind of cool. It takes me right into Canva's website and they don't always take you right to the password change, but at least it lets me know of the areas where I may have a leaked site where I need to change my credentials. And by the way, this is completely free in the app itself. And so if you're curious and you've never done one of this, there's a lot of different places you can go to check for leaked passwords. My favorite is actually Have I Been Pwned? Put a link in the description down below if you wanna check that out. Uh, but this is certainly helpful. The last thing I wanted to show you is the photo vault. So I can hit open on this. And then what I can do is I can actually drop photos into this photo vault. Now there's something interesting. When I hit the set password or passcode for this, notice that it actually tells me, hey, be careful, anything you drop into this vault, when you delete your app itself, all of those photos go with it. So it is actually in app is where it's being stored for all of this. You just need to keep that in mind. So if you're using this for whatever reason, you wanna store photos in this app, I have no use case for that, nor do I have trust for any app outside of what's built into iOS, and even I'll trust them with, with photo backups. But I just find this to be really interesting. So just know that you can drop photos in there. I am not going to set a passcode to this, not because I'm worried about you seeing it, um, but less because I don't want my photos to show up from my phone itself into this. So know that that exists as well. So that's about a tour of most of the things that exist inside the app. But one of the things we really want to do is go check this out in a public network and see, does Avast do anything different? Uh, what does it look like for me when I check out the Avast app itself on an open wireless network? And does that mean anything for me and should I care? All right, so here we are back at the coffee shop and wanted to test the Wi-Fi here and see what we thought about it and if it's working and what we're going to get out of it. Now, uh, the wireless itself is blocking my ability to do an air cast over to the screen, so I'm going to have to record that later and then put that back into the video. You're not going to notice that, but I'm going to notice a lot of what fun that gives. So one of the things I wanted to check with this app is what happens with an open Wi-Fi where it you know, has one of those pop-ups where you're going to put in your credentials, but the actual Wi-Fi is not protected. It's not WPA2. It's completely open Wi-Fi. That's what I wanted to 
test. And I noticed as soon as I connected to it, one of the things that it did was it did have a pop-up notification saying, hey, we're scanning this website. And then what happened is now that I've got it up and you're gonna see here in the app when I have this overlaid onto the video, it does show, hey, you're on Spectrum Wi-Fi. Not only that, but it shows that it is not secure. It says everything you do in this network may be exposed. Now that was good for me to see. It's good for me to see because again, if I'm not a technical user, if I'm buying this maybe for my parents, something like that, and I want them to be careful about the Wi-Fi networks they connect to, this is an added benefit. It's not gonna make sure that every Wi-Fi is completely secure, like I mentioned before. Uh, for example, you know, like uh, Wi-Fi Pineapple is a good example of something that would probably be bypassed by an app like this. It wouldn't necessarily know whether it's secure or not, but what is really good about this one is the generic things, like an open Wi-Fi uh, that has no encryption between me and the access point itself where that data could be leaked out is going to show that it is insecure. And so what would you do with this? What would you, how would you protect yourself against this? Obviously you would turn on VPN and that's part of the uh, purpose of their app. You would hit that turn on right here. And then as soon as you hit that, it is going to allow you to have the ability to purchase VPN and tunnel through it. So even if I'm connected to a completely open Wi-Fi, my VPN tunnel itself is going to be encrypted end to end. And of course all VPNs are gonna do that as long as it's advertising what it says. So now you know how it works. I was curious to see what it would do at the coffee shop with open Wi-Fi. I am glad to see Avast that you notified me that it was an open Wi-Fi and that it was something that I needed to fix. So that in itself is good. Now we're going to go back home and I'm going to give you my closing thoughts all around Avast and we'll see what we think in conclusions. Okay, so there you have it. There is a good review of all of the pieces of the Avast app itself. I mean, it's not mind-blowingly amazing. It does have some nice features. The things I like the most about it, the VPN is great if you just want a very very simple $5 a month, easy to use VPN, and you just are privacy conscious, but you're not doing anything that's overly so to where you don't want some of that information shared or leaked. Avast is a good company, good reputation, and, and would work. Now, there are certainly many other VPN services out there, several of which I would probably recommend over Avast, uh, but it is a usable solution. I do like their password leaking section where it kind of shows you some of the email addresses you have in place that may have had leaked passwords. That's nice. You can get that elsewhere. Overall, what do I think about the Avast app? I think it's fine for home users that are not sophisticated. They want a very simple app. I think the free version should work for most people, but if you do want the VPN, you're going to have to pay for it and that makes sense. So I think it's a pretty interesting app and in what all it's doing. Um, do I think I need it? Definitely not. Do I think most people need it? Probably not, but certainly an interesting app if you're looking for something very simple. Maybe for a parent or a grandparent, you just need to do some basic security protections on top. Hey, I'd love to know what you think about this. I'd love to know what app you're using for your home security on your phone. Give me some thoughts down below in the comments. And as always, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up for me, hit the subscribe, and definitely check out a lot of my other content that I am continuously producing producing all for you, my friends. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks.